In this online lecture, we're going to discuss CNMR, and what we're going to see is that, number one, the principles of carbon-13 NMR are essentially the same for HNMR. I also want to make sure you know, number two, that a Fourier transform is necessary to create CNMR spectra. However, we're going to see that with CNMR, we could run it in three possible modes, spin-decoupled mode, proton-coupled mode, and DEPT mode. So let's understand this. Let's say, for instance, we have a sample molecule, we put him in the NMR machine, and we want to get an idea of his spectra. The first thing I want you to notice is that we can set the machine to measure the types of carbons in a sample instead of hydrogens. And that's why when we do this, it's called carbon-13 NMR. Remember, carbon-13 is the isotope of carbon-12. So only carbon-13s could be measured in a sample. We'll talk more about how that affects the spectra in a second. So for now, know that if we do set the NMR to measure carbon-13, your spectra will run from 0 to 200 instead of 0 to 10 like in HNMR. So that's one difference. And let's look at the spectra of this particular molecule. You would actually see these peaks right here. Notice we still have the 0 TMS reference peak here. But let's also assign the carbons to each peak in the spectra. And like I talked about in key point one, it basically follows the same principles. For instance, start with a carbon in the molecule, let's say this carbon right here on the left, and call him the A-type carbon. And we want to see, are any other carbons in his same environment? If not, we're going to label them as different carbons. So clearly, the carbon next to him would have to be the B-type carbon. He's doubly bonded to an oxygen. The carbon next to him, of course, would be a C-type carbon. That would make this carbon right here a D-type carbon. And these two carbons would be similar due to symmetry or signal averaging. So notice labeling carbons is just like labeling hydrogens. And here's something else that's also similar. The shifting of the peaks. For instance, the most shifted peak on our spectrum is due to the B carbon. Notice he is a carbon involved in a multiple bond and he's the closest to the oxygen. So the factors that shift hydrogen peaks are the same factors that shift carbon peaks on the C13 NMR. And while we're looking at this, I'd just like you to know that these peaks are usually small, meaning carbons that don't have any hydrogens on them give very small peaks like this. And notice our B carbon doesn't have any hydrogens. So sometimes these signals are easy to miss. But let's continue assigning our signals here. The next peak should be the C carbon. Notice he is close to the oxygen and he's a secondary carbon. He's roughly as close to the oxygen as the A carbon, but remember, as in HNMR, tertiary hydrogens are more shifted than secondary, which are more shifted than primary. And notice this still holds true for C13 NMR. So the next peak would be due to the A type carbon. And the next peak here would definitely be the D-type carbon. He's further away from the oxygen. And this peak right here would be to the E carbons. They are the furthest away from the oxygen, and they are primary carbons. And notice here the number of signals in the C13 NMR match the number and types of carbons in the molecule. But let's make sure we understand that we would get this spectra if the NMR machine was set to what's called the spin-decoupled mode. What that means is, in this mode, we get no peak splitting. We'll talk about another mode that this machine could be run in, in a second that we would get splitting. However, there's something I need you to know about C13 NMR, and that is there is no integration, which remember means that the areas under these peaks don't correspond to the number of carbons giving rise to those peaks. Remember, this was the third aspect of HNMR. And we don't get integration no matter what mode the NMR machine is running when we do a carbon-13 sample. I'd also like to mention at this time that in order to run a C13 NMR, it involves a Fourier transform. It's only recently that we've been able to run carbon-13 NMRs. Think about it. Remember, the NMR can only detect carbon-13 and not carbon-12. And we saw before 
At carbon-13, its relative abundance is around 1%. So any sample that we put in the CNMR would not have a lot of carbon-13s. So back then when they used to run a CNMR, the signals on the spectrum were very small. You could barely detect them with the naked eye. But the way they've got around this problem is to run the sample over and over and over again in the CNMR. And with use of a Fourier transform, they're able to distinguish actual peaks due to carbon-13 from what's called noise signal peaks. On the actual CNMR, it's not really that you see straight horizontal lines between peaks like you see right here in front of you. You actually get what's called these noise peaks. And remember, since the carbon-13 peaks are so small, it's sometimes hard to distinguish the noise peaks from carbon peaks. But again, the Fourier transform enables us to get around this by simply running a whole bunch of samples and then canceling out the noise peaks and what it leaves behind is the more distinct carbon peaks. Now keep in mind here, Fourier transform is something you would learn in an advanced mathematics course. This is organic chemistry. So all we really need to know is that carbon-13 spectrums need to be run multiple times in conjunction with the Fourier transform in order to get a clear spectra. Now let's see what happens if we run our sample and set the mode differently and this time we're going to set it to proton coupled mode. In this mode we actually observe the splitting of signals. But the n plus 1 rule here works a little bit differently. For instance, let me show you how. Let's focus on the E carbon. When you're using the n plus 1 rule here, all you have to do is count the number of hydrogens that are directly connected to the carbon. In this case, the E carbon has three hydrogens directly connected to him. That means right here, looking at our E signal, we would expect him to be a quartet. Why is that? Well, remember, he has three hydrogens directly connected to him, and that means his n value is 3, and 3 plus 1 is 4, so the E signal should be a quartet. So notice that slight difference compared to how we did it in HNMR. But let's make sure you got this. Let's look at the D-type carbon. How would he be split in the proton-coupled mode? Well, here he is, our D signal. And notice, since the D carbon has one hydrogen connected to him, his N value is 1. 1 plus 1 is 2, so we should expect to see a doublet for the D signal. Now let's analyze the C carbon here. Notice he has two hydrogens directly connected to him. His N value, therefore, is 2. 2 plus 1 is 3, so the C hydrogen should appear as a triplet. This brings us to the B hydrogen here. Notice he has no hydrogens connected to him, so his N value is 0. 0 plus 1 is 1, so we should expect to see for B a singlet. And the last carbon here, A, he has three hydrogens directly connected to him. His N value is 3. 3 plus 1 is 4, so we should expect to see the A hydrogen to split into a quartet. Just a little vocab here. The type of splitting that's being observed here, notice, is that the hydrogens are splitting the carbon peaks. And that is, remember, the hydrogens that are directly bonded to the carbons. This type of splitting is called heteronuclear coupling. Think about what that means, hetero different nuclear coupling. This means hydrogens are splitting the peaks of carbons and hydrogen and carbons are different atoms, therefore different nuclear. However, there's a third mode that we can set the CNMR, and let's look at that. This is called DEPT mode, which stands for Distortionless Enhancement by Polarization Transfer. We're going to see that this mode is very valuable in helping us determine structure. So let's look at the data we get when run in this mode. In some cases, it spits out four different spectra. Let's look at each one. Here's the first one. The first one is just like the proton decouple mode, which means we get a single peak for all the different types of carbons within the molecule. 
and let's relabel our peaks here. The other spectra this mode spits out is this one right here. And what this spectra does only identifies carbons that have one hydrogen connected to them. So that means we should expect this spectra to look like this. Notice, look in our sample molecule. Only one carbon has one hydrogen attached to it. That is, of course, remember the D carbon, which is right here. But notice, the machine doesn't just give you these two spectra separately. They display them on top of each other. So that means the peak here in the above spectrum, we know from now on, corresponds to a carbon that has only one hydrogen on it. Here's another spectra that the DEPT mode provides for us. It'll show us a spectra that only shows peaks for CH2 type carbons, which means for our sample we should expect to see this. Notice in our molecule we only have one carbon that happens to have two hydrogens on it. And this of course, remember, is our C carbon right here. Again, notice how in the spectra here that it's written right above it. So again, that means we know the C carbon in our spectra below must be a CH2 type carbon. And here's the last spectrum that's overlaid. This one simply just detects the CH3 type carbons. So again, for our sample, we should expect to see this. Notice, it's the E type carbon is the only carbon in our molecule that has three hydrogens. And remember, our E signal is right here. So sure enough, here it is overlaid right here. And again, now we know that that signal in the bottom spectrum is due to a CH3 type carbon. So notice the value of this. When all these four spectrum are overlaid, we flesh out more information about our unknown molecule. So what have we learned here? What's it all about? Key points. Number one, we saw the principles of carbon-13 NMR are essentially the same for HNMR. We also saw that a Fourier transform is necessary to create a CNMR spectra. And we also saw number three, that CNMR can be run in three modes, spin-decoupled mode, proton-decoupled mode, and DEPT mode.